Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie and I'm here once again to help navigate the cesspool that is middle age dating. And today we look at the age old question, can women ask men out? Specifically, can women ask men out when you meet online? Short answer, yes. Longer answer, use my framework. A lot of research shows that men on dating apps are mainly looking for hookups. So what you want to do is weed those guys out. Another objection to online dating is that it is a major time suck. You have to go through all these messages, you have to deal with this all, and it's really important to be proactive and manage your time so that you it doesn't feel like another job. In fact, a particularly unrewarding job. So what you want to do, your main goal in this is to get off the app and get into real life. Exchanging all these messages is clumsy, it's time consuming. And until you meet somebody, until you are face to face with that person, you don't know. People have their out of date pictures, their false pictures, their pictures that end here and then their bodies are complete surprises. Um, and you also have people who you just meet, they're, they're perfectly nice, but once you meet them, you don't have any chemistry. So your main point is to meet them and see what's there. So let's get started. First of all, you can discard many messages. Anything that starts with, hey sexy, or wanna talk, or are you free, you can ignore. Hook up, whatever. You don't need to be respectful to people who aren't being respectful to you. Secondly, when I started dating, I got a lot of texts from guys saying, you know, I'm really busy. I'm, I'm traveling for a couple months on business and a couple who claimed they were government agents and they would be available to me, you know, in a month or two, but let's text. You want, they wanted to get to know me. The answer is no, you don't have time for that. And why? Because you waste all that time texting and then they vanish. There's no return on your investment. Um, you know, some people are on dating apps only to text. That's always confusing when you get messages from people in other states, you know, because unless you're very flexible, that probably isn't going to result in more than a texting kind of relationship. The other issue is people lie and some folks are married or otherwise committed. And you want to make sure that they are available. So, you know, if they want to text at 2 a.m. or something, no. Or if they have a very long time getting back to you, you know, you have every right, and I have done this before when I've said, oh, you're not available for a month. Three words, are you married? And, you know, sometimes you never hear from them again, and that's a good thing. The other problem is you get the folks who are basically like a college exam, uh, I'm sorry, a college entrance exam. They ask a lot of questions. You know, I've gotten these things where, you know, where are you going to be in five years, and what do you see as your future? And those are legitimate questions, and, but again, it takes a lot of time and you don't know what you're gonna get until you meet the person. I generally say, you know, I don't have a lot of time to type. You know, if there's any promise, I'll have a phone call. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't supposed to be a job interview. You don't have to answer all the questions. You're not being graded on your entrance essay. Um, you know, I just read an article online where someone said one of the most disrespectful questions they got from men was, what do you bring to the table? And the answer should be, that's obvious, and you, you really shouldn't. That all sounds a little antagonistic, doesn't it? You know, I learned this a little bit the hard way, because when I was online, I met this guy, and he looked great, you know, really chiseled, you know, aquiline features. And he wrote to me about Plato, and he was really into philosophy. I call him the immobile philosopher because once it was finally time to meet, he asked when I might be driving to his area and was absolutely chagrined that I expected to meet halfway. And when I suggested a place, even explained how I was, I was actually five miles in my favor. So, you know, this guy could quote Plato all he wants, but he was a schmuck and I, I didn't see him, you know. So again, I never should have wasted that my time answering all those ridiculous, though erudite questions. So my secret was I'll do a couple messages with the guy. And if it seems going well, I'll ask to speak on the phone. That's my version of asking a guy on a date. I'm really old fashioned. I'm a little hesitant to meet someone in person first off or suggest it in case they get the wrong impression. And men online do get the wrong impression. Again, anything that starts with, hey, sexy, or I want to get to know you better, 
that's code for hookup. Please ignore it. You don't have to answer this stuff. Um, so, uh, so my thing was a couple messages. Then I'd say, you know, I really don't have time for a lot of messages. Let's talk on the phone. And you'll find your best and more experienced daters do that. If you meet a guy who does a couple pleasant messages, then says, when are you free to talk? Do that. You don't have to give him your number. My secret was to ask the men to give me a number and um, actually to email me their number and for a different email account. So I didn't have my number out there. It wasn't text me because then they'd have my number. But I would say, you know, email me your number to this email address and I'll call you and we'd set up a scheduled time. And if they couldn't manage to do that, then I knew there was a problem. Um, okay, so you meet, you chat on the phone. If it goes well, hopefully one of you will ask the other to meet. Now, again, research shows a lot of men on dating sites are only looking to hook up. So if you get, hey, that was great. What are you doing tonight? They want to meet that day. I wouldn't. It sets off red flags of just wanting to hook up or needing something immediate. Um, creepy ones. Yeah, I just want to get to know you better. Again, I don't really like that. I, I want somebody who has more of a plan in mind. Um, best first meeting. I know this is dreary, but coffee somewhere near you. Uh, meet them there. Well lit place. Tell somebody where you're going. But it's also quick. What's nice about that is if it doesn't work, you can leave. And if they're obnoxious, and I wish I had done this more when I started, just end the date. Hey, this isn't working. Thank you. Now, a lot of men are going to complain. And I, again, I read a lot of stuff online about relationships and women feel bad when the guy goes, hey, I drove here or I just I'm so infatuated with you. I, I can't get over this. That's not your problem. You're not there to make them feel better. And a lot of that sometimes is being used to talk you into things that you're just not comfortable with. Final note, hey, be yourself. I'm friends with this really brilliant college professor and she said every, when she was online dating, she'd meet guys and what they would say to her is, you have a lot of opinions, don't you? Like, yeah, that's a good thing. She's currently decided she's much happier being on her own. So make it quick and be the real you. And don't get dragged into games with texting and weird time constraints or anything like that. Your goal is off the site, meet in person, see if there's a spark. And if he can't deal with it, not the right guy for you. I'm Debbie, and I hope this navigate, helped to navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.